Hey everyone, this is Neon Polygon. So today I want to give a quick review on the Intec Portable GameCube screen. Now, I actually had this screen uh, when it first came out circa 2004, 2005-ish. Uh, and I'm doing this review to show how it holds up in 2020. So I actually did have the portable screens that were also made by Intec for the Xbox and PlayStation 2, but far and above, the GameCube was the best of them. Uh, I do remember when I had the Xbox portable screen that there was heavy ghosting. It had a very low brightness factor, very poor contrast. And, you know, to be frank, it was, it was heavy. It was huge. Uh, it probably added like another six pounds to the Xbox itself which already was heavy. And, you know, the point of these screens are, you know, meant so this way you can carry your gameplay systems on the go and make them portable. And so really the only screen uh, that Intec made, or really kind of the only portable screens for that six generations of consoles, was really uh, only best served on the GameCube itself. So, um... I decided to actually sell my Xbox and PS2 portable screens, but I kept the GameCube uh, screen just because, you know, I used it for so long that quite frankly, and, you know, as you look at its design, it almost felt like it, it was part of the GameCube itself. So I have the purple version of the screen, which, you know, just, or Indigo, which matches perfectly uh, with the Indigo GameCube. And so let me show you how essentially this is all set up. So. Uh, it's all powered by, uh, the portable screen is all powered by the GameCube's uh, AC adapter itself. So what you have here at the, end of the, at the end of the plug is, this is the GameCube AC adapter, which plugs into a Y input uh, for the Intec screen, which you then plug in to the GameCube's, uh, try to get the lighting here, which you then plug into the GameCube's uh, power input. Now for the video display, uh, the GameCube uses the analog um, input, so essentially, or analog output. So what you would do is, uh, you from the analog output, you would plug into this uh, Y plug, so to speak again, which would then provide the video feed for the in-tech portable screen itself. So obviously this is pretty much just in a nutshell, what this is basically doing is it's sending the video source into the Intec screen and all of this is self-powered by the GameCube's AC adapter, which is, you know, quite, you know, amazing when you think about it in 2020. Uh, so in, in, in essence, you know, just like I would say to Wii U, this unit is technically portable as long as you can find a power source. So let's get this guy turned on and sh show you guys what it looks like in 2020. Now, I'm actually filming this review uh, at night. The, and the reason I had to do that was because I needed enough darkness so I can show enough of this, the vibrance and the contrast of the screen so it would show up properly on camera. And, you know, I will say during daytime, this screen is probably not ideal. So I would probably say like, yeah, if you want some nice night gaming, the screen will probably serve you better in those situations. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to power the Intec screen and then turning on the GameCube. As you can see here, it's going to be a little bit hard. There is a little bit of ghosting that you can see that happens on screen. And, you know, keep in mind that this screen is now 15, almost, more than 15 years old. So it probably isn't the best output, I would say, and it probably has, you know, aged a little bit. I do remember when I first had this screen, uh, you know, I was like amazed at its video quality. But over time, I guess, like, these screens generally have some fading to them. So right now I'm playing uh, Super Mario Strikers on the GameCube. 
It's a little bit blurry. It's a little bit, you know, kind of muted colors. And the ghosting is does make it a little bit, you know, difficult to kind of like watch. But again, if you're playing this in complete darkness, it's not that bad. I wouldn't say it's the best screen by far, but it does play reasonably well. So let's show you guys what gameplay footage looks like. So I'm just to set up a quick match. Uh, Sound-wise, it sounds great, you know, I don't have any complaints there, it, it is coming from stereo speakers, the left and the right, and, you know, in honesty, like, if you're playing this portably, you probably are going to be under the guise that it, sound won't really matter that much, uh, but I can tell you, like, I'm in a very small apartment, and the sound really kind of carries, so it's... That's, I feel like, you know, a really good benefit of the screen is that the sound quality out of it is fairly good. Now, as for the video quality, you know, you guys can see it is not exactly... It's playable, but it's not exactly... It's not exactly stellar. It's passable, is the best way I can describe it. I will say if you had used, let's say, like a Game Boy Micro or a Game Boy Advance SP, I almost feel like they have better screens. Uh, I definitely feel the portable screen for the PS1 Mini is much better than this screen. But I still think that this screen, so to speak, is, you know, passable for a home system. And especially for the GameCube, it does the job quite well. So would I recommend this in 2020? I probably would say if it's for the GameCube, I'd say yeah, actually I would recommend it. Because size-wise and um, just overall functionality and practicality, it fits with the GameCube itself. So I would say that this is not a bad, a bad pickup. Uh, now, I would say also when you get this, go in with the expectations that it's not exactly going to be the, you know, the most amazing screen you'll look at but for those who are just looking for a way to get portable gameplay after GameCube in 2020 so for those of you who are big like Smash players for example um, this screen will get the job done and you know after some time you will start to notice um, you know, the ghosting and I guess like the muting of the colors won't be that bad. So let me just actually try to raise the brightness here and you'll see when I raise it, the colors just start to wash up a little bit. And I actually played it like its lowest brightness setting just because it's just a lot. But I get to see a lot more of the colors and it just, you know, it just gives it a little bit more sharpness at a lower brightness level. But even at its lowest brightness level, it's still pretty vibrant. So anyways guys, this is Neon Polygons. Uh, thanks for watching this review. Uh, for those of you who actually have this screen, I'd love to know your opinions to see if like this was something that you would also recommend to other people to purchase. Uh, but if you guys have any questions and want to know more about the screen, feel free to leave a comment below and I'd be happy to answer them. Thanks again for watching and catch you all again soon.